Hey everybody, Jason here. Today I'm going to do the review on my Kyosho RB6. Now the RB6 has been a really good car and I originally bought this car for two reasons. One, Ty Tessman, the hot bodies driver, was running it and since a pro who drives for a company that doesn't have a two wheel and can choose any two wheel he wants, when he chooses a car like the RB6, it says something. It tells me that it must be a pretty good car. The second reason was that I really wanted to try a mid-motor car, but at the time there wasn't any combo kit. I had a B4.2 and didn't want to convert it, so I would have had no other option but to buy a B4.2 and a Centro, which was like 500 bucks. And then they were just doing all kinds of hop-ups from there. So really, at, at the, when I bought the RB6, it was really the most economical way to try a mid-motor platform. I built the car mid-motor. I really liked the car mid-motor. I played around with flat arms and going arms and all that stuff. And overall, the car was really good. I ended up moving on when the B5s came out and went, played around with my serpent buggies and all that. But now, the RB6 is my full-time club racing car, or I guess just my full-time race car. I'm really happy with it, and uh, I just thought I'd share what I've learned about the car with you. So, the build went really well. There have been guys that have said, hey, the screws feel a little soft. And at first I started to agree with them, but now I'm thinking, no, it's not the screws that are soft. It's the fact that the plastics are just so rigid. There is no other kit that I've built yet whose plastics even really come close to the Kyosho stuff. Um, and, and what's really interesting is not only are they really rigid, but they seem to be really durable. I know some of the other stuff, some of the, there are a couple other cars that I've played with that have really rigid plastics, but it just tends to be a little bit more brittle. So I don't know what Kyosho is doing, but they have great plastics. Now their instruction manual, it sucks. I'm just gonna tell you right now, these Kyosho instructions are horrible. Maybe if you can read Japanese, it's better, but still, I don't like it. To this very day, I have no idea specifically how much anti-squat is in my car. Now, I know how many shims I have, and I can kind of reference other driver setup sheets, but there is absolutely no literature that tells you, you know, when you put a half a degree shim here, or a, or a half a millimeter shim here, or a millimeter shim here, what it actually, how much anti-squat you have. So it's really, instead of measuring anti-squat in degrees in this car, we just measure it by shims. That's just the way it is. Uh, but I thought I'd share, uh, share some things with my car, uh, share my car with you and show you what I've done and uh, how I feel about it. Now, I came from an associated platform. Here's my car. Actually, no, before I show you my car, I came from an associated platform, so I had a ton of associated wheels. Now, luckily, I'm really partial to the AKA wheels. I'm kind of partial to J Concepts and Proline tires, but I really like the AKA wheels. And so this is an AKA two-wheel drive Hexalite front wheel. This is a Proline front wheel. Both are really good wheels, but here's what I want to show you. Look at how shallow the hex is in this wheel. Look at how deep the hex is in this wheel. So if you can see these side to side. So what happens, here's the problem. If you're running a bunch of associated wheels or even these Proline wheels, when you put them on the front of this car, you just, don't, you just don't end up having enough room for the wheel to hit and the wheel will rub the plastic. So that's kind of a bummer. So if you're thinking about maybe trying this car, I really like the AKA wheels. The Kyosha wheels also fit really well. Uh, one of the downsides to running <coughs> all the AKA wheels is the rear, the rear axles just don't tend to be long enough to run a lot of the associated, the AK, even the AKA wheels. You'll only get a couple of short threads on there. And uh, I run all of these Durango wheel nuts specifically because they're serrated and they work really, really well. I don't care for any of the nylock style wheel nuts. I just find that over time the nylock wears out and the wheel nut will come loose. And sooner or later you will strip, uh, you will spin a hex inside a wheel, which is no fun. Here's the solution. If you, if you are running an associated platform or another platform and you really want to migrate to the Kyosho platform, Avid sells just the axle itself with the hex uh, and it's, it's much longer so that it will fit the, the associated wheels or the AK wheels or whatever much, much better. So if you're looking to jump ship, take a look at the, the Avid kit. The other thing that's really cool about Avid is that if you snap an axle, they will replace it for life, which is really, really cool. I have seen guys break axles in this car, not too often, but if you get the Avid one, uh, it's a good buy. And it's like 22 or 24 bucks, and so it's, it's definitely worth it. Uh, so uh, I'll take you through my car real quick, just to show you what's going on. Uh, it has an R17 chassis protector on it. R17 is a company owned by uh, a buddy of mine back in Iowa, 
And uh, it's basically made out of like motocross film and you will not find a more durable chassis protector. I've got one that's been on my SC10 for like three years. It's crazy. Uh, I, uh, so, so here's the car. It's got Lunsford Super Duty titanium turnbuckles. And uh, there are a lot of companies out there that make titanium products these days, but all titanium just is not created equal. Uh, these are all grade five. The screws are grade five. Uh, even the Kyosho screw set that you can buy for this car, to the best of my knowledge, it's not grade five titanium. So if you are going to invest in titanium turnbuckles or ball studs or, you know, screws or whatever, I would take a look at the Lunsford stuff personally. It just happens to be my personal favorite. Uh, I'm not getting paid to tell you that or anything like that. I don't have a Lunsford sponsorship, but it's just, it's high quality equipment. So, uh, the other thing that I like uh, about the Lunsford Super Duty specific turnbuckles um, is that there's a hole in them so that you can actually put your hex driver in there and you can change your ball stud washers without popping off a ball cup. Every time you pop the ball cup off, you're wearing it out a little bit and it's more likely to come off in a race, which is, you know, the last thing you want. This car is amazingly adjustable. I don't know, uh, I don't know, I guess I never realized how adjustable the car can be. But one thing that's really worth investing in, and I have them actually in my parts box, they're not on the car because I've been playing around, is I have the aluminum arm mounts for this car that go here and, and in the front. And you can adjust with the pills that go in these aluminum mounts, you can adjust the track width of the car, the rear end. And so the narrower the track width, the narrower those hinge pins are together, the more the car wants to roll and the more traction it tends to have. And the wider, the farther spacing of those rear pins, the more it wants to rotate and the more aggressive it'll be. But uh, with the pills that come with these aluminum rear arm mounts, you literally can change track width, toe, uh, anti-squat. You can just change so much. Um, actually, I think that I take that back. You can change track width and toe, but the anti-squat is actually controlled with shims. So uh, anyways, uh, super adjustable, super adjustable car. And there's a lot that can be accomplished. If you're going to run the car in mid motor, on a medium to higher bite surface, I would definitely recommend uh, the pills D and put the holes in. So D in, D in, seems to be the way that everybody's going out here. And it just makes the car carry a ton of corner speed, has quite a bit of bite, and just, just seems to work really, really well. So, all right. Okay, so here's my car. I'm running this J Concepts uh, front carbon fiber uh, shock tower because a buddy of mine bought it for one of his cars and just didn't use it, so he gave it to me. So thank you, Brandon. You can see that it's got all lungs for titanium screws. I'm running one ball stud washer uh, on both sides up front, and I'm in the, the middle hole in the, uh, on the front bulkhead, and obviously there's only one hole out there in the caster block. Uh, I, uh, I'm running pink springs. I'm running uh, Losi, or actually I was running Losi 55 pistons, but I just put the actual Kyosho uh, 55 pistons in. If you're gonna run the Losi pistons, you may wanna invest in some of the real thin shims, the three millimeter by five millimeter shims that Kyosho sells because the piston will just rock up and down in between the, the Eclipse and you can just shim it so it doesn't move at all. But if you buy the Kyosho pistons, I found that you don't need to shim them at all. And you know, they're more or less the same price. So Losi 55, or I believe it's four hole by 1.3 piston. I'm running a Savox 1258 TG titanium gear servo. Of course, you know the AMB transponder. I run all Futaba gear right now. So this is just a Futaba 4PK, uh, 4PKS and a uh, six. This is actually the, the Futaba wireless, antenna-less receiver, which is really cool. Not wireless, but antenna-less. Uh, it's designed for indoor only, but I've never had it glitch. I've got a uh, Reedy battery in there. You can see that's a 602. It's a 4100 milliamp battery. Uh, as far as speed control, I'm actually running the, uh, that's a Hobbywing 3.1. And it's actually worked out really well. Now. I did have some problems cogging with my Reedy motor, but I'll get into that later on in another review, specifically for the uh, Hobbywing speed control. And I'm actually running, believe it or not, this is one of those Trackstar, one of those $40, or it's actually $32 motors, and it is really smooth and delivers great power, and I'm, I've been really impressed with it. Uh, so I've talked a little bit about my car. Talked, oh yeah, by the way, uh, Pink Springs, Red Springs. I'm running the Gullwing rear arms, and I'm also running a really long, rear link, so you can see how long the rear link is. And I'm also running the version two hubs, the aluminum hubs from Kyosho. This car is really interesting because it's even in, I like it better in rear motor than I do in mid motor. And because it, it has so little droop, 
uh, it just tends to run like a touring car. I don't, I haven't really raced it outside, so I can't tell you what it's like outside, but I can tell you indoors, this rear motor car has as much steering and feels similar to a mid motor car, just with rear, more rear bite. Now, one thing that I need to bring up is I was really having a hard time getting this car to do what I wanted it to do. And something that's important to me is like explaining my expectation. You know, you talk to guys on like RC Tech or in some of these videos, and they're trying to tell you that their car is great or this or that, but they don't tell you what makes it great. I like a car that has quite a bit of steering, not oversteer, but quite a bit of steering. But when you want to really wrap on the throttle and get it out of the corner, it'll hook up bite and it'll go forward fast. It will really drive out. Generally, I like my cars to carry the wheels just a little bit. I don't want a car that does massive wheelies because that's all wasted and that tends to lead to a really bad on power push. But I want the car, when I wrap the throttle, I want it to just, just barely carry the wheels in a straight line. And if the wheels are turned, I don't want it to carry the wheels at all. I just want it, kind of want it to track cleanly while it's on power. And uh, one of the problems I had with the Kyosho car is a problem that a lot of people have had. I just couldn't get enough forward bite out of it. It just, it just wouldn't develop the forward traction I needed. And uh, so let me show you a short clip of what I did. I went ahead and I chopped off the front poles on the, on the bulkhead brace right here. The same thing can be accomplished by just unscrewing them, but I wanted a little bit more room for the Speedo. And you can see that the chassis actually flexes quite a bit more. Now this isn't so much that it's dangerous, but it's quite a bit more and it, make, it just gives the car so much more forward bite, I can't even begin to tell you. So if you are struggling with forward bite, try taking those two front screws out of the bulkhead, you know, underneath the shock tower and uh, see what happens. I think you'll be surprised at how much more uh, forward bite the car develops. It's really, it's really pretty impressive. So overall, I'm really, really happy with this car. I have I have chosen to stay away from the really light chassis. Uh, I like the car just the way it is. Uh, I know the light chassis is nice, and if you're running stock and stuff, I guess that's it's probably not a bad way to go. But overall, I'm pretty happy with this. And you can see that now that I've taken that the front the front uh, post off of this bulkhead, there's a lot more room messing with the speedo and stuff like that. It's really really nice. And I don't know, you know, obviously I've already showed you the video, but you really can't see too much in this. But there's there's definitely more flex. Uh, I had the chance to talk to Ty Testman and his dad, and they did some really interesting things with their mid motor car when they were like developing and testing on it. They actually ran saddles side by side like this, and they servo taped them down to the chassis. They actually took and took a Dremel and actually flattened the chassis out to create a little bit more flex to get more rear bite to get more rear bite out of it. Now I haven't really gone that drastic because I just haven't needed to, but. Uh, Overall, this thing is really good. It's got a really, I mean, the Kyo, I don't know what makes the Kyosho diffs so good, but the diff in this car is just like, it's, it's ridiculous. And uh, another thing that's really nice is with the Kyosho cars, you can just go ahead and on the non-slipper side, on the motor side, you can just put like a little hex wrench in there, turn the, other, the wheel on the other side, and you can adjust the diff just like that. So it's super easy to adjust the diff. And, and of course, these cars are all really sensitive to, the, to how tight or loose the diff is. So... Uh, overall, I'm really, really happy with my car. Uh, the only thing I will tell you is, uh, the only downside to owning this car is it is just ridiculously expensive to own and maintain and repair. I mean, for this, this one little bumper, this little bumper piece right here, it's like seven or eight bucks. And I mean, that's just, I mean, I, I get the Kyosho stuff's good, but man, are they proud of their stuff. It just... Just too much. It's just it's too expensive. Uh, dog bones or, or CVAs or whatever, forty five bucks. Uh, just I don't know. You know I love the car. The shocks are amazing, super smooth. I'm running the X rings, the Kyosho X rings in there. Uh, the car handles well. It's actually a lot more durable than I thought it would be. Um, but uh, I just wish it wasn't quite so expensive to maintain. You see, I've got the fancy steering rack on there. I put, I've tried using genuine Kyosho parts anywhere I could on this car. Um, I just think that it's nice to, to use that stuff. There are a lot of cool companies out there like Exotech and Revolution Designs and some of these companies that are making really cool parts for this car. But overall, I like to stick with the, uh, the Kyosho stuff if I can. So I really like this car. Ironically, when I was getting ready to run this car to shoot for this video, I ripped the ball set out and I really didn't want to work on it. And so two of my friends at my local track, uh, Gage and Zach, 
Uh, Zach used to be an actual factory Kyosho driver. Uh, they were both out on the track. So instead of filming me running this car, I filmed them running their cars and uh, Zach happened to beat me the other night. I shouldn't say happened to beat me. He's, he's clearly a better driver than I am, but uh, uh, he beat me the other night. So I'll show you his car. It's set up almost identically to this one. He just runs a shorter link in the back to make the car rotate a little bit more aggressively. And uh, that's about it. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If I can think of anything else, I will, uh, I'll update it for you. And uh, we'll see you next time. That was pretty ninja. That was nice.